Oh, I thought I'd lost you. The sort of a, a marshal, so I asked him if he knew her. Oh, she's, she's over there. She's actually thin. She's a thin girl. She, maybe, maybe she's lost weight. Uh -huh. So, oh, there's a group for Went back to Melville Terrace and along the Did road it? we came as far as Did you could it? see. Well, the concessions to the tr motor traffic. And we are absolutely nowhere near that. So we need to have more action from politicians. We need to have a step change in funding, and it needs to happen now. like myself are here, but look around, that's not who's represented here. There's women, there's children, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a letter out. We are making it, um, look at all these young people we have here, it's about them as well. We want to be something, a network that is credible and direct from our homes to our place of work, to where we buy our food and shopping, uh, to our leisure places, without fear of, of, uh, of traffic. And it's a non-confrontational, uh, from my, my point of view, not that there's not many obese people here because we're cyclists, but <laughs> there is an obesity and health problem, fitness problem in this nation. Um, we, as cyclists, will visit the NHS on average less than people who do not do exercise. It's a fact. Uh, you are actually saving money from the start by increasing people's ability to cycle freely when they can be And to be honest, I don't have anybody to answer to. And I'm actually quite surprised that 100 million is all that's asked for. <laughs> On a foreign company to build a tramway in one city. I don't need to say anymore. It's great to see so many people coming out here. Uh, thanks for listening to me and uh, Good hope for the future. Thank you. Yeah. The correct person that uh, who was on the expenditure is unfortunately able to attend today, but he will be meeting uh, Kim and uh, David Brannan at a meeting on the 20th of May to discuss the campaign. It's encouraging that so many of you uh, have participated today, and by, showing, uh, by doing so, have shown your passion for cycling and your commitment to a key form of what we call active active travel and also to reducing Scotland's carbon emissions. We want to see Scotland where cycling is the norm and not just for those lycra clad gentlemen I see in front of me but for him. <laughs> from, from 8 to 8 it has to be our motto. Until cycling on our roads is safe for everyone from 8 years to 80 years we have not succeeded. And just remember that in Denmark and in, in Holland you know they've done this too. They have taken to the streets and said we want action now, and the, the progress today, there's been some, but it 
is far too slow. So let's have more cash now. Yeah. <laughs> the Parliament will tell Keith Brown what has happened today. And in fact, I think he will say to Keith Brown, I'm not going back there next week <laughs> unless you give us the money. <laughs> the benefits are immense. We can have health, we can have you know, reduced air pollution, we can have safe healthy streets that are for people. It's perfectly sensible, it happens across Europe and I don't know why we're just not getting it yet. I, mean, I, I don't want this to turn into a political issue. I want to work with colleagues across the parties. We've set up the cross-party group on cycling, we have plenty of discussions, we, we're joined with the fantastic spokes by CTC Scotland, by Cycling Edinburgh, by Substrans. We all get it. So what on earth are we waiting for? Yay! Be reassured that I will keep campaigning on this issue till I'm blue in the face because it is so important. Things have to change. And if we keep attending these rallies and these numbers, and lobbying those who hold the purse strings hard, we will get there. Thank you very much.